everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are so happy to have you here. We're gonna decorate some spring-themed cookies together today. And before we get started, I just wanted to welcome you. My name is Denise, I'm the owner of Diaz for Delicious. And a few things I would love for you to grab before we get into the fun box here. Why don't you be sure to wash your hands. Also, you'll need a pair of scissors. You'll need a few toothpicks. And then definitely some paper towels, napkins would be good to have on hand. And something to put on your table. Um, a tablecloth works great, a cookie sheet, a piece of parchment paper, just something to cover up your surface. That way cleanup is super easy. So why don't you grab those things and then we can get started. All right, so in our cookie box here, let's take out all the supplies and then just set the box aside. So inside, you'll see four different colors of icing. These colors are so happy and cute. And you'll take out your packages of cookies. There's a cup of sprinkles that you'll use later. This practice sheet and two piping bags that we'll be using later as well. And so let's just get that big box out of the way. That box will be really helpful for just storing your cookies in as they dry after your class today. All right. So with all of your supplies here, the first thing that I like to do when we get started is to go over how to use the piping bags. So even if you've decorated with me before or on your own before, it's always good to warm up. I feel like it's always a good idea to just practice again and get warmed up. So why don't you just massage all the piping bags in case they've settled a bit. It's always good to just warm them up in case they got cold or anything. I'm gonna use teal, because that's my favorite color. And then what I would like for you to do is snip off just the tiniest bit off of the tip of this bag. It's always easier to trim more as needed. So start small. You can always trim off more if you've, you need to. So I'm gonna trim just the littlest bit off here, just enough so that I can cover the lines. And the way that I would like you to hold this bag is I would like you to put this tape portion in between your pointer finger and your thumb at the top there. You'll hold on tight with your dominant hand, the hand you write with. And then the other hand is just going to be holding it steady. It's just going to help keep it from moving around and give you some control. You're going to be squeezing with this right hand. And as we work, we're not going to touch the tip of our piping bag to the paper. We're actually gonna hover above a bit. So let me show you how. So I'm just squeezing a little bit here. And notice I'm not touching the tip of the piping bag to the practice sheet. It's just dragging that stream of icing along. And when you get to the end of the line, you touch down and pull up. That is the time when you will touch the, the tip to the surface there. So you're gonna to touch down and pull up. And so this is always a good way to warm up before we work on our cookies. I notice that it's always good to warm up before you get into the real deal. So that's what we're gonna do here today. And if I'm going faster than you are moving, Please don't rush, take your time. This is a really important part in just getting familiar with how the icing behaves, your hand control. It's always really good to take your time with this. So pause the video if I am moving along too fast. I may have done this a few more times than you have. So it comes a little bit more naturally to me now because I've practiced so much. And the more you practice, you'll get so much better too. I'm looking so forward to spring coming up. These shapes are getting me excited. I don't think we're almost there yet, but I'm gonna pretend like we are. At the time of making this video, at least, it's not springtime. I'll let you in on a secret, it's still winter, 
but that's okay. Spring is around the corner. The circles are the most challenging shape to do here. It's really tricky to keep your hand moving in that circular motion. but it's a good skill to practice. You'll be making a circle in this set that we're doing today. There's a circle coming up in the center of the frog's belly. Okay, and finally we'll do the hearts. Like I said, please pause this video if you are still working on your practice sheet. I just finished mine, but I don't want you to rush. I'd love for you to go over every single line just as I did and practice all of those shapes. All right, so now that we've just finished up our practice sheet, we can move on to the cookies. So. I'm gonna explain a few things to you as we open up our cookie bags. We'll take out our six cookies here. And we're going to be doing three steps as we decorate them today. There are three steps and the way we break it down is this. We do our outlining first on our cookies. That's where we put all of the borders or edges along our cookie. And then we do our flooding in the second step. And then after that, we do our detailing where we put on all the cute touches. And so I'm setting the cookies out in such a way that we're going to do the tulip flower in the watering can and the flower with the little leaf. We're gonna put those in front of us first. I like to work on one row of cookies at a time and then kind of switch them around. That way we have better control. I find that when you work on cookies closer to your body and your arm doesn't have to stretch across the table as much, you have better control. So we're gonna keep these three cookies closest to us and work on outlining them first. And I'm going to trim my piping bags. I have the one trimmed now, but please go ahead and trim your other bags at this time. Now, I think I'm gonna mention something to you right now, just in case you trimmed your, um, in case you trimmed the bag that you did your practice sheet with too big. Let's say you just, you trimmed it way too big and you regret it because now it's just pouring out. I'm gonna show you a little trick right now with these extra bags. We, we supplied these so that you can use them for mistakes like that, trimming the bag too much or for the end when you do the detailing. Sometimes it's nice to rebag your icing then too. But I'm gonna show you now the way to rebag your icing in case you trimmed any of your bags too big. So open up one of the bags, take the bag that you trimmed too big. Let's say I wanna rebag this one here. I want you to chop off a pretty big chunk of this bag here, even bigger than it is. I want you to take the bag insert it into the new bag and just squeeze that icing and transfer into the new bag. And now you can have a fresh start. And so in case a bag breaks along the way or anything like that, now you know how to transfer the icing. You can pop it in the new bag and then tie a knot on the top. And there you have a fresh start. All right, so we are gonna get started with our outlining. And that's all we're gonna do in this stage is we're going to put a border along all of our cookies and get them ready for filling them in a little bit later. So I'm gonna do it similar colors as the photo so that you can see what how that goes. So at the tulip, we're going to do our outlining as close to the edge of the cookie as we can without going over. So you want your piping to be on the cookie. You don't want it to slip off the edge. 
And so I'm using that same technique, the way that I squeeze the icing and have it fall into the cookie. And if you're making any of these lines that you're maybe not satisfied with, that's what the toothpicks are for. Just scrape it off and fix it now. It's so easy to correct mistakes at this point. If you don't like the icing on a cookie, you can wipe it off with a toothpick or even with a napkin and then just start again. It's super easy to correct mistakes right now. I'm gonna add a little green stem area there. And so all of my outlining is done now for the flower. I'm gonna leave it be and move on to the watering can. So on the watering can, you'll notice we left a little area at the top for sprinkles. Those will represent the flowers. And then we're just going to be following along the shape of the cookie with whichever color you choose. Now just because I'm using certain colors doesn't mean you need to use those colors as well. Be creative. If you have an idea, go for it. All the colors will taste the same. And so if you're feeling inspired to try something, I say go for it. We're just following along piping that icing on and creating a border. And then in the top portion there, we can outline it. I'm gonna use a yellow for the background here for my sprinkles to just sit on. Sprinkles will stick to wet icing, and so I'm gonna add some icing to that in our next stage, which is the flooding stage, and the sprinkles will sit nicely on that. All right, so that's as far as I'm gonna go with the watering can. Now, this one, I know it's a little tricky to see the shape right now, but it's going to be a flower with a little leaf off to the side. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to work our way around the cookie. Flowers can be any color, so choose the color you'd like. I'm gonna use yellow. And when you get to that leaf area, you're going to leave it be so that it can have a little petal there. we go and then I'm going to take a green and add that green area for the leaf. So I'm planning ahead. I'm just thinking about all of the colors I'm going to use on the rest of the cookie. So now that I've outlined these three, I want to move the other three closer to my body. I can handle the cookies I haven't done yet much easier than the ones that I've just outlined. Those lines are wet, and so you wanna be very careful when you move these around. I'm just using my finger here to scoot them up the table, up and out of the way. All right, so now we're gonna work on the rainbow, the frog, and the umbrella. So on the rainbow, choose your color that you're going to do the majority of the boot with. I'm gonna use this teal. And so I want to go straight across at the top. I'm leaving that top area alone for that little loop that helps you pull on your rain boots. And I'm just going to follow along. I'm not going to do the heel in this color because I want to make it fun. I want the rain boot to have a different color heel. There we go. There's my teal rain boot. And then We'll add a pink heel here. All right, and we'll add the little loopy part in the detailing stage. So we just did our outlining for the rain boot just like that. And if at any point I'm going too fast, please feel free to pause your video. Just pause it and take your time. This isn't a race. Sometimes I tend to move too quickly because I'm just so excited. So I want to slow down so you guys can be sure to follow along. You don't need to rush. All right, so for the frog here, we're going, if you can look at this shape, it can almost be tricky to decide which side is, which way is up. It's actually the, the, the more narrow portion that is his head and the wider portion that will be his lower bot body, the legs. So have that part on top, the more narrow side. And so you're gonna follow along the top. I like to start here at the neck. Kind of like his cheeks, 
This is going to represent the eye area. And as we work our way around the bottom here, we're going to do the outlining just a little bit different to represent his legs. His legs that are kind of in that sitting position. I'm not exactly following the shape of the cookie on the bottom. I kind of left it a little bit, a little bit of the cookie showing because I really want to highlight his positioned legs as he's just kind of sitting there ready to hop. I want to bump out this one portion here that I don't like. So I'm going to scrape it off with my toothpick. There we go. And this is a good time to take a look and try and make both sides look symmetrical. See if they match on both sides. All right. Oh, he's going to be so cute. All right, so we're done with the frog and let's move on to the umbrella. Now I want to show you an alternative um, decorating uh, route you could go with the umbrella. In the example, we have the sections of different colors here on the umbrella. And so that's more of a, I would say more of like an intermediate decorating idea that you can use where you outline each of those areas to flood a different color. And that is super cute. I want to show you another decorating way that you can do this, which is to do this. So I'm going to outline in my example here the entire shade, the entire umbrella. I don't know why I just called it a shade. Shade you from the rain, I guess. I'm going to go and cover the entire umbrella with this pink. And then I'll be doing a fun detail when we get to the flooding. Just another way that you can try it. So I'll do the handle in a different color. It's super narrow, so just remember to try to keep the icing on that handle. And there's also that teeny little top portion there you can outline all right and so there's the outlining for doing it this way you can choose to go either route I would look at the two options and decide which one's for you so you've just finished the outlining stage way to go press pause if you're still going with that remember use your toothpick to scrape off any icing because this is the foundation for the rest of our decorating. And so if you're not completely satisfied with something on your cookie, just start again. So our next stage, we are going to be doing our flooding. And so this is where we cover our cookies with the icing. We're going to rotate these cookies back to the ones we outlined first. We're going to begin with the tulip and then the watering can and then the flower with the leaf on it. All right, so when we do our flooding, we can trim our bags just a little bit more to allow the icing to come out a little faster. Or if you feel that you outlined your cookies um, or if you feel that the tip is just right for flooding, you can leave it as it is. I always like to start and see if I like how I've trimmed it and trim as needed. I like to keep it on the smaller side. All right, so when you flood, you are going to be squeezing and just covering the cookie with icing. There's really no certain place to start when you do your flooding. The goal is just to get the icing on the cookie as quickly as you can. It's not a race but you certainly want to move quickly because the icing starts to dry and crust over kind of quickly. So I'm just applying a lot of icing. It looks like a lot, but you need a lot of icing so that you can cover all of the cookie. You don't want it to be too thin so that you see the cookie peeking through. And so once you apply a bunch of icing, I like to set it down and then grab a toothpick and just gently 
nudge the icing over to all of the edges. You want to make sure there's no gaps. I want to make sure it is covering every little bit of cookie between the border and the middle. So once you do that, sometimes you'll see maybe little bumps on your cookie that aren't quite smooth. One thing you can try if that happens is to gently just tap the cookie on the table and it just kind of helps settle down the icing and it looks really smooth after that. So we'll fill in our stem as well. And so the flooding is just filling in all these borders. It's like coloring in a sense. You're just coloring with icing. And then we'll just let that be while it starts to dry. This is one of my favorite parts about making cookies. I really enjoy the flooding. I think it's really peaceful. So you're just covering your cookie with icing. Some people like to start in the middle of the cookie and work their way out. Some work from top to bottom. I really don't know if I have one particular way I do it. I kind of change it up based on the shape of the cookie. Like this one, I started on the spout and went to the can portion. So just do it as you would like. There is no wrong way to do it. Now, sometimes, especially when you're a new decorator, it can happen that maybe you put on a little too much icing and it spills over the edge of the cookie. It goes over your border. That's not a problem. I actually think it's easier to fix after it dries a little bit, so you can just kind of let it go. It might be like a waterfall, but you really can clean it up nicely after it crusts over a little bit. So don't worry about that. It happens to all of us. You can always tap it a bit. And then to make the area on top represent like it's full of flowers. Some people plant flowers and watering cans and I think it looks so cute. I'm gonna apply this yellow and then I'm going to use my sprinkles while the icing is wet. You'll notice in your sprinkle cup there are two eyes, so you don't want to use those eyes on the watering can. You want to save those for your frog. But very carefully place these in the top area. If you want, you can place them on the watering can too, if that's the look you're going for. The sprinkles are for you to use however you'd like. Some people love to decorate with sprinkles, some people not so much. So whatever you're in the mood for. And then we're gonna just leave that be. Now for the flower with the leaf, we're gonna try something called marbling. It's a wet on wet technique and it's where you blend two icing colors together while they're wet. This is a technique that you have to do while the icing is freshly done. We can't go back and do this technique on our tulip or on our watering can right now because it's been drying too long already. So if you like this technique, it is something that you can only do while the icing is wet. I am actually going to be trimming my yellow just a little bit more. This is a big cookie and I did trim my yellow super big. So I am just gonna start flooding it. I'm gonna start on the outside and work my way in because in the middle, I'm gonna be adding some pink. A lot of flowers have centers that are different colors. And so I'm gonna be making the center of this cookie a pinkish color. And then I'll show you how to blend it to just make it look unique and kind of realistic. So I'm gonna take the pink and apply it to this area here. And I'm even gonna add one more layer of yellow inside here, just for fun. And then I'm gonna take a toothpick and I'm just gonna kind of swirl it. 
I'm just gonna make it look like nature. Nature is always kind of sporadic and unique and no two flowers look exactly the same. And so that's what we're doing here. We're just kind of swirling it. I just love how it adds just a different sort of look. So if you're watching this, you can decide if this is something you like or just doing it all one solid color is beautiful too. And then if there are any areas that haven't quite settled down, I'm gonna tap it just a bit. There we go, that helps some of those areas to settle down. It really does start to dry fast, so that's why we have to move quickly. And now I'm gonna fill in that leaf here on the side. We'll add some details to this one later in the detailing step. But for now, that's where we're going to stop on these cookies. And then we're gonna shuffle these cookies around, bring these unfinished cookies closer to us, the unflooded cookies, I should say. And carefully we'll move our flooded cookies up and out of the way so they can keep on drying. And as they dry, they're gonna crust over and allow us a solid surface to be able to add our details to. All right, so for the rain boots, on the example, you'll see there are some polka dots and those polka dots are actually done when the icing is wet. So it sinks down into the base color, into the flood icing. Before we start to flood this cookie, something that I just want to practice with you, maybe even off to the side or on part of your um, parchment paper or um, tablecloth, I want you to practice some polka dots. So when you make a, a polka dot, I recommend that you press down to the paper and squeeze. It kind of like infuses the icing and grows the circle. So that's the way I would recommend trying polka dots is having the tip of the icing, tip of the piping bag into the blob of icing. And as you squeeze it, it will grow. So that's how we're going to be making polka dots into the wet flood icing. All right, are you ready? Let's do it. So let's cover the rain boot with whatever color you like. I outlined mine in teal. You don't have to flood it the color that you outlined it with. There really are no rules with cookie decorating. You just have to run with it. Whatever you're feeling inspired to do, you should try. Because in the end, they're all gonna taste the same and they're gonna taste great. And I bet you're gonna be really proud of the work that you've just done. It's gonna be so nice. Sometimes it's hard to see it all come together in this stage. But you are doing it and you're gonna do a great job. I just knew it. Take your time, press pause if you need to at any point. I always use a toothpick to make sure my icing goes up to the border and peek around your whole cookie. Sometimes it's easy off to the side or on top to miss an area. So really move your head, get a good glimpse all around. And then while this icing is wet, you have to do this right away. You're gonna take another color, could be any color or two colors. And I'm going to start with pink. I'm gonna press down into the icing and infuse until it grows. I'm gonna add a little more to this one because I need that other one so big. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stagger like this because I'm gonna put yellow in between these. I'm gonna make yellow polka dots a part of this pattern. And we'll add one more there. And then I'm gonna grab a yellow here Yeah, with polka dots, really is easy if your icing bag is touching the surface. That way you have more control over the size. And when you pull the bag up, it won't flop over. All right, so you've got your polka dots down, can fill in the heel.
and that's as much flooding that I am going to do on this cookie here. I'm gonna move on to the frog. All right, so with the frog, a few things to keep in mind is as we're working on the frog, you'll notice he has some like, I wanna call them freckles. I don't know if that's a technical name for frog spots, but I'm gonna call them freckles. He has some freckles on his face, and that is done in the same way we just did the polka dots on the rain boot. So we're gonna do that while the icing is wet. I also wanna show you his tummy has that yellow circle. And so that is also done while the icing is wet. So we're gonna do those things. I wanna keep those in mind. So I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start with his yellow tummy, just so I don't forget to do it, honestly. I'm gonna just do a yellow circle. I'm just gonna fill that in there. We did a circle in our warm up. So see if you can make your circle. And then we're going to just start flooding the rest of the cookie green. I could have gone around his belly first. But I always, I guess my go-to is starting at the top and working my way down. I think I just noticed that is the way I tackle most cookies. We all have a tendency in how we approach a cookie. I didn't think I had one, but I think I just noticed I do. So we're getting all this wet icing to just merge together. You might notice as you're flooding that you might start to use the tip of your icing bag almost as you use a toothpick as you push the icing around the cookie. And that's okay too. All right, so after you have your cookie flooded, make sure you don't need to use a toothpick to spread out any icing. And then you're gonna make a few freckles on his face just anywhere in that area. Make some polka dots. I'm just gonna go across this whole mid section of the face. There we go. And the eyes you're gonna wanna add while this icing is wet. And so in your sprinkle cup, locate those two eyes. And then what you're gonna do you can have the eyes close together. You can have them far apart. I think they look so cute when they're far apart. So kind of go in the area and drop it. And then you can always take a toothpick to just gently guide it into the final resting spot. So take your sprinkle eye, kind of line it up, and then use a toothpick to get it into its final spot. And there we have the flooding for our little froggy. And then for the umbrella, I'm gonna be flooding it one color and showing you another wet on wet technique that you can try if you'd like. So if you want, maybe just watch this part and then decide which route you wanna go. Maybe polka dots on your umbrella, that would look super cute too. But I'm gonna show you another alternative. So you can decide what you'd like to do. First thing first, flood. Oh, I wish I could peek through the camera here and be able to see how your cookies are coming along. I love it when people send me pictures of their finished product. It's so fun to see what everyone's done. So if you take a picture, be sure to send it to me or tag me if you're on Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to see it. Okay, and so after you have that done, why don't we add, hmm, I'm gonna add yellow as my stripes here. I'm gonna make some stripes. Okay, and here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start at the top. And I'm just gonna make some lines going across. I 
noted for. I think three lines would have looked nice too. Okay, and then here's what we're going to do. We are going to drag our icing. I'm gonna see what it looks like if I just drag them all up. There we go. So I'm just dragging my toothpick up through the icing and notice what it does. It creates this really cool pattern in the background and it gives it just another effect. And so you can try that if you'd like. Marbling is so fun. There's really so many ways you can do it. Polka dots, dragging the lines, it all just turns out kind of unique and fun. And then we can work on filling in our handle. This is such a narrow little space. So just take your time here. You really might not need a toothpick for this area. You can really use the tip of your piping bag to just nudge it into the area. And that little portion on top too gets a little dot. There we go. And if there are any cookies that you want to add some sprinkles to, make sure to do that while it's wet. The umbrella also might look cute with some sprinkles on it. There's just so many routes you can go. So press pause if you're still working on your flooding and then I'll be back here to show you some detailing. Okay, so I want you to leave your cookies to set for a good like 10 minutes or so would be ideal. So if you have something you need to do, this would be a good time to finish your flooding and then step out to go grab a snack or anything you might need to do and allow about 10 minutes for them to dry and just crust over a little bit before our detailing. All right, so We've let our cookies dry for about 10 minutes. You can tell that it looks like they've crusted over a little bit. They have more of a matte finish now. If you would like to rebag any of your icing that maybe you've trimmed quite a bit, you can make that choice now to rebag it. I am going to rebag my teal for making the little handle on the watering can. But you have those bags that you can use as you'd like. Don't forget the way you rebag is you're gonna chop off a pretty big chunk and then you're going to pop the old bag into the new one and transfer that icing. And then tie the knot in the top. And if you need somebody to help you tie a knot, Press pause and have somebody help tie a knot on the top there. And then we're ready to go. So we're gonna add our final touches now. So for the rain boot, the portions that I'm going to be doing some adjustment to are adding a little loop at the top. This is always helpful on the top of a rain boot to help you pull it on. Usually there are these loops on both sides of the boot. So I just made a few arches here to make a thicker loop there. And then just for fun, to add a few more lines to the rain boot, I'm gonna make a few little stripes. This one just is a little fun line where it dips down a bit. We'll make a little yellow line here on the top. got skipped over so I'm gonna go over it again yeah this stage is just so fun because this is just where you're putting all the finishing touches on and so this especially is a time to just get creative and just see what you would like to do sometimes it's hard to stop decorating honestly and so you just got to take it and run with that okay so for the frog I'm gonna go across all of these freckles make just a very big wide smile and I'm just gonna add some polka dots there with my red to really highlight his smile and 
then for his legs. So I always think it's really good to wipe off the tip of the bag before you use it on detailing. So have a napkin or paper towel handy. It really will be helpful so you can see your bag. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be making his front legs. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of create one little leg. It almost mimics the back legs a bit, but they're just in front. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. His little feet are just heading out like that. There we go, our sitting little froggy. And then the umbrella on mine, I'm done with it, but if you have done like a solid color and you wanna add any stripes or any detailing, that would be great to do. But with the marbling, I just love how that looks. And so I'm gonna leave my um, umbrella be just like that. Um, I do need to move my cookies around. And I know we started with the tulip and I just got so excited to get detailing, I forgot to switch them around. They're all dry and ready though. So you really can decorate whichever ones you'd like. They're very wet though. Even though I said they're dry, they're dry enough to have your details on top. They're not dry to really like package or set on top of each other or something. The icing actually needs time overnight to finish drying. All right, so for our tulip here, here's how we're gonna be doing our detailing. I would like you to follow along the shape of the tulip again. It's almost like we're outlining it again. This just will give it some more dimension and give it a really nice finished look. So I just go over the whole outside edge and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at this peak right here, this little dip, and I'm just gonna drag a line down like that. It's kind of like arced just a little bit down across and then you're just going to connect it to this V here. It kind of gives it the dimension and look like petals are all kind of bound together. And there's our tulip. All right, on the watering can, there's a few things we're gonna do. If you would like, you can decorate, add any sort of details on your watering can. I'm gonna add a little heart down here in the corner. So I'm gonna just draw a little heart there and then just carefully fill it in. And it's always good with hearts when you want it to be symmetrical on both sides. If you just add a little more icing to the sides, you can even it out, make it look matchy matchy on both sides. I rebagged my teal because I wanted to have a smaller opening to do my handle portion. So as it is right now, it's just, um, you really can't tell what this spot is here. I'm gonna make the letter D right in this area. I'm making that straight edge almost in line with my cookie at the bottom there, and making a D. And that helps give it the look of the handle. You can see where the handle portion is now. Yay. And then for the flower, so on the flower, I'm gonna wipe off the tip again. What we're gonna do here in the center is we're just gonna make a bunch of lines starting in the center and really just waving like ruffly lines. Starting small, working our way bigger and bigger all around the cookie here. And then at some point you just have to kind of stop. But yeah, that's how we can make the flower look ruffly. And then on the leaf, you can make it look a little bit more like a true leaf by giving it a vein down the center. And so I'm just gonna loop mine around a little bit, just like that, a little bended line. And feel free to go any direction you want with these. It's really hard to stop because there are so many blank areas where you could add some fun special touches. So certainly have fun, be creative, enjoy the finishing step of detailing, 
And like I said before, they do need some drying time. I love how they taste the next day after they've dried overnight. I think that's when they're like at their finest, but you might want to just have to sample that out and have some now. But the box, they can rest in overnight. And I just really enjoyed that you joined me today and I hope you had fun. Please check back for future kits. We make so many different types of kits for all seasons and occasions. So I hope you had fun and thanks again for joining me. Have a good day, bye-bye.